We're glad to know you're still there. Right now, we're taking our second hot topic, which is also on INEC as it is, and elections and voting and especially registration. Voter registration is essential to democracy and should be easier, especially as everyday people are born, everyday people get to 18, everyday people get to the ages that they were not in the last four years, and it seems as if it's every four years that we wait to hear about voter registration, even though we have something called continuous voter registration. And so I have here with me, uh, via Zoom anyway, um, the team lead for DIMNET Nigeria, Democracy uh, Network Nigeria, DIMNET. Uh, I'm talking about Uzoma Aneto. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Now, why is there need right now for this clarion call? Why do you need to call on INEC or any other body for that matter to make registration easier? Thank you very much. Um, I think the last um, elections that just came and gone uh, revealed a lot of things. And uh, prior to the elections, we discovered that um, all this why, there has always been an identification of uh, why uh, people don't turn out to vote. And one of the reasons is that um, there's voter apathy. People don't like to go get their um, voters card, people don't even come out, they don't believe in the system, they don't believe their vote to count, and all that. And um, the last uh, voting period showed that there was massive, massive turnout of people who wanted to make their votes count. And it was like a rush. And it appears that even INEC could not handle it from the time of um, registration to collection of voters' card and all that, it wasn't too seamless. And it led to some people even being disfranchised. So after this, I think it's part of the lessons learned that INEC should now take up a measures to see that such events don't occur anymore. And that is why we say if there is a provision in the act for the continuous voters registration. What is stopping us? INEC should go ahead, just like a child turns 18 and wants to go get driver's license. He walks into the licensing office and gets the license. So what is the big deal about voters card? Let it also be the same thing. A child turns 18, I want to go get a voters card and he goes to get a voters card. So that towards the electionary period, when the start of or kick starts, it doesn't pose a very big threat or a very big challenge, just like what we noticed in the last election. So that is just the background to that. But is it really an INEC thing? Because like I said in the opening, and you have also said it, uh, there is continual voter registration. Is it not a Nigerian thing that they wait for the last minute before uh, this kind of things are done? Or take, for instance, the um, national identity uh, cards or identity registration. A lot of people waited until sanctions were placed on whoever did not have it and so many other things before they went and there was rush hour. Do you think it's really an INEC issue or it's a Nigerian thing, Nigerian people thing? INEC uh, has come out on several occasions to state that uh, the whole idea why, because you can't just walk in and say I want to get a voter's card. It, it, it doesn't happen. And the main mention of the fact that uh, they want to, they, are, they, they like to start it up at a particular time so as to give them the opportunity to do cleaning up and all that. So it is, it, it is in the law quite all right, but it's not practicable. You cannot walk into an office right now and tell someone I want to register or open the portal and you're able to register. So is actually an INEC issue, not necessarily the people's problem. Yeah, I understand the fact that, yes, people like to do things in Nigeria um, at the dying minute, but no one 
it is not uh, in practice that INEC um, portals are open for voters registration or maybe their, their, their staff are available for voters registration. It is actually an INEC problem, not the people's problem. Have yes. they advanced any, oh, yes, it's a reason that they want to do cleaning up and all that, but what is the challenge that they face? Because one of the things that people kept saying when they were having problems registering was the fact that you can walk into a bank, for instance, and get your ATM the same day and no hassles because everywhere you go to, these ATM cards are available. Your data is available, so anybody can do that. Have they given any reason so far that makes them want to have it at a particular time, uh, that makes them find it difficult to do the cleaning up, like they say, so that, you know, an attempt to make the people understand with them? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, like I rightly stated, this has been the practice over the years. At least from 1999, we started the real democracy um, uh, uh, uninterrupted. On, on, on it has always been the practice that INEC only calls for voters registration towards the period of elections. They call it open. They don't really advertise, they don't really sensitize people that you can walk in and get your voters registration. And it is because, one, the complaint of manpower, too. But we have discovered that almost all the local governments, almost Let's say zonal, zonal um, uh, uh, INEC offices, they have manpower. And we are saying after the elections, these people are almost like redundant. They are not doing anything. So, and we discovered also that when you call uh, for voters registration towards the uh, maybe uh, close to the elect uh, electionary uh, uh, period, you find out that. It's, it's also difficult because by the time you keep compiling, because all this why it has always been that people are not willing to come up. But following what happened in the last election should make INEC rethink and say, how do we cope this thing? How do we make it? It will not be difficult. So if there is proper sensitization, oh, you can walk in and get it. There is no way because the last uh, political dispensation or the electionary dispensation has showed us that the Nigerian people can actually uh, uh, um, come out to vote if the right system, if the right things are put in place. So mm -hmm. for me, it, it, it's, it's, it's a kind of a system um, review. We have been doing this thing this way. Why don't we try this other way so that we'll uh, um, stop uh, setting uh, functions we saw in the last election. Because if the Timmy population, which is the young people, and they are not, they don't have that feeling that, oh, they can get their, their voter's card is only towards a particular time, then there is, there, is, there is the disconnect, and it shouldn't be so. If the law has provided for, for it, then INEC should make every plan to start early. To start early, once you start early, you find that even the things you're envisaging that might come up with time, you start seeing that you start on time to start working towards avoiding those things. So mm. the issue is, it's INEC thing. They've always had this problem that they don't have enough manpower. But we believe that if you start it on time, you'll be able to identify things you're going to start out before or close to the next election uh, uh, period. It's really funny uh, talking about manpower because if 1,000 people are supposed to come close to the election to look for their registration or to get registered, maybe at least 50 to 100 or, or 2, 3, 100 will come before that period and you have less work to do. And the manpower is, not, they don't employ new people uh, towards election except the ad hoc staff that will go into the election itself, so I don't know why the manpower issue is there. But what is the level of engagement right now? Are you still planning to engage them, or, or you have already engaged them, and how far so far? Then that Nigeria is working across uh, the sectors, because in trying to tackle um, issues like this, you must have to think broadly. You must have to um, look at ways 
not just one way. It has to be a multi-sectoral ways of engagement. So obviously, INEC uh, um, has to be visited. Kotsiko has to be paid to INEC. And we are on the verge of doing that. We are, there's already um, a, a request to do that. And we'll be getting feedback any moment from now. And also, we also want to um, engage the political parties and the, the youth themselves. Catch them in the school, um, um, higher institutions, colleges, and all that. And also carry out online campaign and all that. So um, INEC is very key. We have to um, engage with them. We have to also, because they are not the only observers in, during the elections and all that. We know that people came up with a lot of uh, results or information concerning the, uh, the, the, the elections that, that uh, uh, took place. Even the EU came up, and it was one of the recommendations that nobody should be disfranchised and that voters' registration should also be continuous to avoid last-minute issues and disappointments. So are, are, you, are, you, are you engaging them? Are you, are you trying to let them start early or, or to never stop? Just for clarity. Well, starting early, never stop, you're the same thing. That is just the whole idea. Start now, never stop, you're the same thing because if you only leave it for a period of time to start engaging, that is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the outcomes of the reports of the EU. So let it be continuous. Let it not stop. Start early. Because if you start early, that means towards the electionary period, or the, uh, um, uh, you will not see certain um, issues that you encountered in the last election. At least the last election was a very good or a real eye-opener to issues bordering about voters' registration. Mm -hmm. So start early, never stop. Both of them should work together. Uh, now that you're talking about engaging INEC, uh, this is like final, uh, engaging INEC, if you do get them to start or to continue the registration without any stop, do you also have any plan for the orientation of the people who have to access this uh, these uh, registration portals or what offices and everything uh, to keep them sensitized enough to engage or to, to take advantage of it? Thank you very much. Engagement with INEC will bring about policy change. That is the whole idea that I want to see a situation whereby INEC will start adjusting. Mm. And this means also that the manpower will be trained, the manpower will be retrained or reoriented, uh, or re uh, will be resensitized to the issue that you need to now uh, start uh, uh, the vot uh, continuous voters registration. If there are things that you used to be maybe from my next planning, how they plan their whole um, period to close to the election period, these things will now be factored in. So it's all about um, um, advocating for a system change, for a policy change that will not accommodate it. Okay. Because all this why it's always towards the uh, period of time, but it, the advocacy is uh, is get towards changing the policy mm. that will not make voters uh, registration continuous one, and it should it should be seamless. Okay. Thank you so much, Azoma, for coming on the show and uh, telling us your thoughts. Uh, we do hope that you are going to get. Uh, your target, you know, get INEC to continue the registration as they say they already have continuous registration uh, for the people so that they don't get to get that clog when the time comes very close. Thank you so much for coming on the program today. I am delighted. Thank you very much. Okay, that was uh, Zoma Aneto, Team Lead, uh, Democracy Network, or Demet, Demnet Nigeria, uh, talking with us on the need uh, to get INEX to continue the registration of voters and not wait till the dying minute before they do that. And uh, we are going to wrap up the show at this moment, but before we go, here is the quote for the day. Every new experience brings its own maturity and a greater clarity of vision. That is according to Indira Gandhi. And that's how it's been on the show uh, this morning with 
take a bow now, but we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow for the same program and at the same time. And on behalf of the entire team of uh, Breakfast on Floss TV, my name is Nyamgu Agaji. You have a wonderful midweek.